Welcome back to another episode of Funny Animal uh, Videos. Today we're going to be doing some really cute um, rescue stories instead. So I thought I would change it up a little bit from Reddit. Excuse me. And it says the questions that I read all of your cute adoption stories. <coughs> so here's number one. I knew that I was ready to adopt a cat. So I started look, looking online at the Humane Society. I went to the pound, but it was so sad that I ended up leaving without a cat. I went by the local ASPCA the next day to check out their cat room. They had a really friendly cat who just crawled up onto my lap and demanded to be petted. I told the worker that this is the one, and she said that he had just been adopted the day before and he was on his 24-hour hold period. I was so bummed and told her that I didn't really meet another cat that I bonded with, so I would come back another day. She was like, wait, I think, I think I know one you might like. I think I know, oh my gosh, I can't read that one. I think I know one you might like. She took me to the back of the shelter until she called the welcome room, basically a small room with cat trees, a fridge, and, sink, and a sink. There was a little kitten there and a really big fuzzy cat too. I sat down, and the big guy came up to me, sat down just out of arm's reach, and started purring like a motor. The worker told me that he wasn't good at standing up for himself and was bullied in the main cat room, so he lived in a separate room as the welcome cat. To the new cats coming in, I picked him up, and he started to headbutt me. It was love. It was love. It's been five years, and he still purrs like a motor every morning next to my ear in anticipation uh, for breakfast. I love that big guy. Aw, so cute. I love that story because I lo wish I had a cat, but yeah, you just like, I think it's like one of those when you know, you know kind of cat deals. Um, number two, I rescued a beagle from a laboratory. He's very energetic, so I heard something about the reason they use be beagles in laboratories, and this is really sad. I can't remember who I heard this from or where I've heard it from. But they use beagles, and I think it's beagles. I could be wrong too about this. But because beagles are the most forgiving dog breed, they will use them in laboratories. And I think that's really sad. Anyways, I, I rescued a beagle from a laboratory. He was very energetic, social, and just overall happy, even though he had a pretty shifty life. He had been in the laboratory for the first four years of his life. He never, never seeing the sun and never setting his paws on fresh grass. He had a tattoo in his ear. The lab put it there with some letters and numbers. Let's say it was ABC001. Probably labeling the dog. After having him for about three years, my wife and I moved into a bigger house with a huge backyard and we had always wanted to rescue another dog when we got a bigger house with a backyard. So we went and secured another dog from the laboratory. We brought our dog and right away he connected with one of the other beagles. They played and played, and he really didn't seem to give a poop about any other dogs. They looked similar, and their mannerisms were very much alike. The dog he was playing with was very shy, and he had been rescued a couple other times, but the people had returned him. We said, hell, our dogs like him. That's good enough. So we take him home. He also has a tattoo in his ear, and it's one above our current dogs, like ABC002. We thought that was pretty odd, so we did some investi investigating. We called the lab to get a bunch of information. Turns out that our new dog is our current dog's older brother. They are both amazing dogs, and the newer guy is being much better with his shyness here and there. Here and here are a couple of pictures. Oh, you can, yeah. That's cute. Let's see if you can get to the pictures. Oh, beautiful dogs. I'll put the link in below so you guys can go check it out as well. Um, I think that's bittersweet. At least they were able to find the brother of the, the other poor beagle baby. I woke Okay, number three. I woke up su supremely hungover and with food poisoning to hear meowing in my apartment. We didn't have a cat. Laying in a haze, I had a feeling I, ha I know where this is going. I heard meowing, more meowing than my roommate yelling, what do you want? That's when I knew there was something I had to deal with. When I got out of bed, I found a soaking wet cat and my annoyed, confused roommate dog person in the living room. Turns out our neighbor had been evicted. The cat had been thrown out by the landlord, but another girl uh, living in our building had fetched him and put him in the communal hallway with a can of tuna. 
and decided to name this cat named Griffon. My roommate was going nuts at the sound of crying outside her door and let the dirty, dusty cat in when I met him uh, was after he she'd given him a bath. <coughs> she treats him like a dog and doesn't seem to mind. So while my roommate went to work and the cat dripped water everywhere, I hauled my sick ass to the pet store for food and litter box just in time. As when I came back, he had a little accident. We named him Buddy for his temperament. He spent the first evening curled up on my lap. In fact, that's where he is right now as well. Buddy has got some health problems pertaining to his old age, 13 plus, but seems very content overall, especially when he gets belly rubs. Oh, that's so cute. I thought you were going to say like a drunken story. Like I picked him up because I picked him up because I felt bad because he was so drunk. That's what I was thinking, but I totally did not. Yeah. Number four, I had taken a job that had me driving to a different town, to different towns to our clients. One town or reserve had lots of stray dogs, typically. I had just gotten enough stability to start thinking about getting a dog. This one just came right up to me, friendly as could be, starving skin and bone, frost on his ears, but friendly. I got him some food, but all he wanted was a friend. I came back each day with food and love for him, and about a week later took him home. That was seven years ago. He's been my friend, er, best friend ever since. Same town, and then later met two other dogs who desperately needed help. These ones were very scared, and it took a lot of patience to convince them I'm not like everyone else and won't hurt them. One of, the, one of them I worked with for almost six months before he let me touch him. I took them home to about a year apart. All were very friendly. Well-mannered dogs, great with children, babies, and you name it. I take it, ev- take them everywhere and spoil them rotten. I would too. And on to our last story, Rescue One. So this is one story within, but two stories within one person. Rescue One. I've been an obsessive dog person all my life. Same here. But it wasn't until I was in my 40s that I deemed myself responsible enough to take care for one. One Saturday, I woke up and said, today is the day. In my mind, I kept seeing a small adult female dog, white and fluffy. I checked out our local SPCA website and didn't see any matching that. And stumbled upon a rescuing event at our local pet store in about an hour's time. I got there before the van arrived, and as they're pulling out the dogs, there's only one small adult female, and she was white. Not fluffy, but that was cool. That was 13 years ago. Rescue number two. I decided about four years ago to get another rescue and put in applications all over, but only one rescue group really got back to me. One Saturday, I dragged my husband all over town to the SPCA and every rescue we went I could find, but nothing really sparked. I was so dejected, and my husband tried cheering me up by telling me that the right dog will come along. I snapped back, yeah, like we'll go home and there will be a message on the machine. Hey, I found the perfect dog for you. Well, we got home, and the light was flashing on the machine, and the adoption coordinator of the one rescue that I followed up left a message saying, I found the perfect dog for you. I ran an adoption event now, but I'll drop her off afterwards. So mine were just meant to be, right? Yeah, 100%. That's so funny how that happens. You just never know. Um, Our furry friends are, call- are calling for us in one way or another that we have no idea about, probably, you know? But that is it for me. Those are the stories I'm going to share with you. Happy Adoption Friday, or Adoption Friday story telling. I don't know what to call it, but I just thought of something like that would be cool. I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day, and we'll chat soon. Bye now.